I'd say daily I spend about two to three hours playing video games, but on some days, maybe if I've got tournaments on, I could play eight, nine, maybe even up to 12 hours. An addictive behavior actually feels very good to the individual because what the activity is doing is releasing dopamine, which is a quote unquote feel good neurotransmitter. That when that's released in our brain, it gives us that feel good feeling. So it makes us feel very good about what it is that we're doing. I'd say I probably spent about $5,000 my setup maybe and then another thousand pounds on in-game items or games in general. Um, I first started playing video games when I was probably about eight when I got my PlayStation. My favourite game to play at the moment is Fortnite because uh, you play against other players and you can also play with your friends and I'm just trying to improve on it, on my skills. So I'm aware of the negative impacts and I try and keep away from them and just speak to my friends instead of random people. I was certainly worried about negative effects of gaming and all the worries and concerns you'd obviously heard on in paper, media and all that, but um, I felt it was something you, could, you couldn't deprive him of because it was, the children will chat about games and stuff, so you don't want to be completely um, you know, harsh about it and feel possibly he's allowed it but it needs to be controlled somehow. So that was my way of sort of giving into it, really. Gaming addiction becomes problematic if a child does anything, avoids anything but gaming. So if they have no social life, if they aren't in, able to engage in school, or if they aren't able to engage within the family unit, then of course that's going to be bad. I'd rather play with my friends online than meet them at the park because I'm still speaking to them, but we're both doing what we both enjoy. We also keep the gaming in a communal area so we can monitor him. Mm. It's not in his room, so he has to come down here so we know he's down here and we know what he's doing. And he can't say, well, I'm in my room and I'm reading and, you know, sort of lie. So <clears throat> monitoring it here and having it in a family space, it's much easier to control it and say, right, off. I do worry about the effects of gaming, um, especially on vulnerable children. Um, and I think that, that, you know, there's a reason why a lot of these games have got age restrictions on them. And that's because a child's brain isn't emotionally developed and, until at least 13. And so the vulnerability of, of these children in that they... Um, you know, they think that they're speaking to their mate in another school or they speak, think they're speaking to, you know, someone else playing who's the same age as them. Um, and, and no matter how much training we do and, and e-safety training we do about, you know, protect yourself and don't give out your passwords, there there are a lot of very vulnerable children who, who, who believe. Um, who believe what they see or what they hear. I, there's a case study um, two years ago with three year six girls who were gaming. They were having a play day and they were gaming with some game. They were talking to, to some um, who they thought was a, another student at another school. And it turned out that he wasn't. He was a 40 year old man and he managed to persuade them off the game onto WhatsApp, then onto Skype, um, and then ended up filming them and, and was quite abusive and they, they were sexually um, exploited. Um, at no time when I talked to those girls afterwards did they think that they were in any danger or, or felt made to feel uncomfortable. And when I asked them why, they said, well, we didn't give them we didn't give him our password, we didn't tell him which school we were at, we weren't wearing our uniform and he said that we could stop at any time if we felt uncomfortable. So I really do worry about the, you know, the younger that they start gaming, the more vulnerable that they are. Definitely gaming can have some negative impacts if you don't control your perhaps obsessions or playing the game too much and restricting work you do or your life outside of gaming if you spend too much time on it or 
having issues with your back if you don't have enough exercise. Gaming itself is not bad. And a lot of parents see it as bad because it is something that their kids engage with on a regular basis. But there are very positive things about gaming uh, to do with um, your, let's say, your uh, visual skills development, your, your sort of visual processing development, your hand-eye coordination, your, you know, those type of developmental skills that are quite important, you know. Um, a lot of the fighter pilots, you know, um, actually, you know, sort of use similar situations um, in, in a sort of virtual virtual situation as if they were in you know in a war or something and it is very similar to a game that kids play you know online these days so it, it's nothing nothing about it is is bad at the same time is it good well yes i mean it's it's something that is quite useful there's nothing wrong with gaming as long as it's done you know appropriately with the right type of boundaries I'd say the most positive things about gaming are one, the fact that it's an escape from the real world, and two, the fact that you make really good connections with mates and you get to spend time with them. Uh, and it also helps you build like skills in terms of working together as a team. The other positive um, impact is for those children, you know, that are academically brilliant and able, there are some that are really sporty, and then there are those kids that just haven't got their thing, so it may be that that gaming is their thing, so it's it's really good for their self-esteem. They can express themselves and they find something that they can be good at, so I think um, it, there's another outlet for them to feel good and boost their self-esteem. I'd say certainly socially, as playing games has helped me in terms of meeting a lot of new people, becoming more confident in myself, especially streaming can help you uh, a lot more confident, showing your face to hundreds, maybe even thousands of people. Uh, I think with the media portraying video gaming perhaps as negative is mainly because they don't understand the benefits that can come from it and they just see it as a sort of toxic community that they're not really part of. Which at some time of course it can be quite toxic but there's other ways in which it benefits people in terms of creating certain friendships and the world has moved on from where it was 30 years ago.